thought I'd just show you a really quick gift idea. It's a little bit different than what we usually do. This is just a very simple wrapped um, Swarovski crystal. And I just thought I'd show you how I wrap these. You can use them for pendant or you can use them like I did here for earrings. I just put them on a sterling silver French wire. little fancy French wire here. And they are really fast and easy to make, and they make perfect gifts. Of course, you don't have to have Swarovski crystals. They can be any top drilled crystal, just as long as the wire will fit through the top hole twice. So let's look at what we need for this project. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys that I am going to make this necklace too. Well, it was an afterthought. I decided that I wanted to do something else with the little component that we're making today, the little simple wire wrapped component. I decided I wanted to show you a few other things that can be done with it or one other thing in particular. This can be done with it and just give you a little idea. I know most of you are familiar with stringing and with wire wrapping and using jump rings and stuff so I just do a real quick run through on how I put this together. I do add to the material list some four millimeter round um, beads. These are metal beads. I also add some 6mm round jump rings and a toggle clasp, of course, and um, those are some of the things, if you want to make this, that you should have. Also some crystals. These are Herkimer crystals. I bought them at a bead show. You could use just regular um, clear or whatever color you want, Rondell crystals, if you decide you want to make this necklace. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is what you're going to need for this project today. You're going to need some artistic wire. This is 22 gauge soft and it is um, silver tone, the bright silver tone. And then you will need two crystals. These are Swarovski teardrop crystals. They are 22 millimeters long, 10 millimeters wide. You can use any top drilled crystal for this that you would like. It doesn't have to be a Swarovski. It doesn't have to be this size. But this is what um, I'm using today. And as long as you have um, a big enough hole in the top of the crystal to run your wire through twice, you should be able to use it. Then, of course, ear wires. These ear wires are something I got from Silvex Craft a uh, year or so ago, and these are sterling silver French, fancy French wires. That's kind of hard to say. And then you will need, let's back off a little bit, you're going to need some end cutters. Oh, I just stuck my thumb in the film. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There is the end cutters. You'll need round nose pliers. You won't need them much, but they're good to have on hand. Then maybe some plastic flat nose, just in case your wire gets kinked. Not necessary, but nice to have. And that's all you're going to need. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's back off just a little bit, is we're going to cut about six inches of wire, six, seven inches, something like that, of wire off of our little roll here like so and then we are going to if you want to you can straighten it out with your plastic um, nose pliers but I don't really feel like I need to do that because I'm just going to kink it up as I do this anyway so um, this crystal I'm going to go through the hole right here so it's top drill like I said and I'm going to turn it this way just so that I can control it a little better. I'm going to pull the wire through about halfway, not quite halfway. We're going to have one wire side a little bit longer than the other. And then I am going to try to keep it in, um, in control here so that this wire doesn't move because I need this length to work with. So right about there. Then I'm going to bring the shorter end over and wrap it around and I'm going to go back through the hole of the bead like so and then I'm going to pull this loop try not to pull it through so that I lose any of my length over here I'm going to pull it around till it's a perfect circle like so 
You can make it however, whatever size you want. I'm going to make this just a tiny bit smaller. Right there. You want to make sure you have enough room between the top of the crystal here and the top of the loop. Get close so you can see what I'm talking about. Then you can see you want enough space here so that you can put a jump ring through or whatever, an ear wire or whatever you're going to do. Now, I'm going to pull it just a tad smaller if I can without distorting it. Then I'm going to take the other side of the wire again. Let's back off and take the short side and I'm going to go back through it again. So I'm going to try to hold on to everything nice and secure and without kinking my wire, I'm going to bring it around into a circle and push it back through the whole of the bead again, like so. The nice thing about this is as you do this, pulling it through, the motion of it pretty much um, takes care of the shape of the circle. As I say that, it doesn't. And if not, if you have a little double loop like this and it's not, and it's a little oval, take your round nose pliers and just gently shape it so that it lays against the other um, loop nicely. Like so. It's a little bit more oval than my last ones were, but um, it's still pretty. It's still nice and neat. So now I am going to lay this short one down, the short end of wire down against my bead, like so. And then I'm going to take the long end, let's back off a little bit, and I'm going to start wrapping this nice and tightly around the bead. Wire on top, uh, or just lay the wire neatly as you do this. Let's get a little closer so you can see. Just layer it as you go, as neatly as you possibly can. You may want to count how many turns you take if you want your... Um, if you're making a matching set and you want them to be exactly the same, you'll count your turns around. Now, I'm going to lift this a little bit. I'm going to cut this one right here and push it down. And then I'm going to bend this one out a little bit and cut it as close as I can. And then I'll just... Um, tuck this up under a little bit with my round nose pliers here if I can. I should have cut that a little closer. And there we go, that's better. And then I can shape it however I want. And then you have a perfectly wrapped little crystal. Really easy really fast and you can put a jump ring on this if you want. I could open up a jump ring, slide it on there and use it for a pendant on a chain or I can open a ear wire. Now these ear wire loops are really little and this is kind of thick here because I have it doubled. I could use a jump ring to put on here too. If my um, ear wire doesn't fit on it then I can do that. But I'm going to try to just open the ear wire, if I can find which end opens here. Yeah, it would be better if I use these. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to open it side to side and then I'm just going to slide this on here. And then I'm going to close it again, if I can. And then I have a really pretty, high quality piece of jewelry to give someone for a gift. I mean, that's, I don't know how you could get much prettier than that for a nice, simple, elegant gift. And there you have it. Okay, so I have decided that I am going to make a little necklace. I have two of my um, crystals wrapped, just like I just showed you. I just didn't put the ear wires on them. And now I am going to make something out of these. So what I'm going to add into the mix are some jump rings. These are 
fairly large, probably six millimeter round, something like that. Jump rings. Let me look at the package to see if it says. Oh, I'm just filling them. I think it says six millimeter. And I've got some crimp beads, Belon crimp beads. And this is a size number two. And then I have some soft flex. And I am going to go ahead and use some crystals that I bought at a bead show. These are actually quartz crystals. They're like little rondelles. They're kind of, I, I believe, they are really close to being Herkimer's. If they're not Herkimer's, I'd be surprised. But I'm going to use these and I'm going to string some of them. I'm going to make a center portion of the necklace so that I can dangle a couple of these pretty little pendants off of it and show you how I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a couple of jump rings. I, I think I'm gonna get like six of them out. And I'm going to connect six of them together so that I have a little chain. So I'm going to leave this one closed and then I'm just going to open this one and I am just going to connect them together. Let me get another pair of pliers. I'm opening opening them. Oops, that's not a plier. I'm opening them from side to side. And then I close them from side to side, making sure they're nice and tight, tightly closed. And I'm going to put like I'm going to do this with like, oh, I don't know, six of them, I think. So then, actually, I'm going to do four here. I'm going to pick up another one. I'm going to open it. And I am going to slide my pendant onto it like this, one of my crystals and then I'm going to slide that onto the three I just connected together. Make sure I shut these tight. I don't really like using jump rings but I don't have any chain that matches my wire that I used really well but these jump rings do so I'm going to use them. And then I think I am going to open one, connect it to the um, second or the third jump ring down. So on this, I have four jump rings. I'm going to connect this one on the third jump ring down, maybe. <laughs> no, so much fun working with jump rings. Okay, right there. I've never been, I've done chain, chain mail, uh, mail and I love it. It turns out so pretty, but I hate doing it. I hate working with these little things because they, I don't know, they just irritate me. I don't know. And then I'm going to pick up another and I'm going to connect it to the one I just connected to the third one down and close it. And then I think I'm going to do one more. And this one I'm going to connect to my other pendant and onto, oops, yeah, see? I didn't get that one closed well. That's okay, I'll close this one. And this one. Boy, I did not close those well. I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. Uh, this is just me playing, guys. I'm just playing. I hope I don't bore you to death, but I just wanted to make something for my mother for Christmas, and she loves these crystals, so I thought I would make her something with crystals. So now I'm going to open this last one on this one here that I just closed for no reason. And I'm going to connect this to the loop of the other crystal right here. Instead of connecting it to the other jump rings. Ugh. 
Okay, and now you can see why I'm a bead weaver instead of a wire person. Because I stink at it. There we go. Okay, so basically what I've done is just connect the two. You can see um, like this. That's what I've done. Now I am going to get myself a piece of soft flex and I think I'm going to make it about, because I'm going to do one on one side and then one on the other side. So I'm going to make this, I need to get something to measure with. You okay, Hunter? Sorry, my dog is kind of sick, had to check on him. He's an old guy. All right, so I'm going to make this Oh, back off. I'm going to go from here to about, I don't know, I'm going to make it about 12 inches long so that I have plenty of room to work with. And I'm going to cut it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to figure out what I want for a clasp. So I'm going to grab a package of clasps here isn't the perfect color but it's about as close as I've got at this point so <laughs> look at the way that opened ha <laughs> ha this is more of a comedy than it is anything else okay sure all right let's open that up I'm gonna grab one of these out of these out of the way and I am going to go through a crimp bead which I don't have opened either see what a mess I can make with these That would be nice if I had a pair of scissors close by, but you know, that would be just too easy. My <laughs> work area is an absolute disaster because I've been making Christmas presents. So really all we need are about four of those. I'm going to put this aside so I don't spill it. And I'm going to go through the crimp bead here. Most everyone knows how to string, so I'm just kind of going through this just to do it. Then I'm going to go through the crimp bead again. I went through the clasp. I'm going to go through the crimp bead again. And if I can get that through. Pull this down like so. Then I'm going to crimp this bead. So you use the back of your crimpers first. And then go to the front of the crimp pliers and crimp it again. And let me show you. So what I've done is I've just crimped around like this. Now I am just going to string as many as I think it will take of my crystals on here. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. And then um, I will crimp the other end and attach it to my uh, pendants. So we'll be back after I have strung all okay, of my so crystals. I have made one side of my necklace and I have decided to go ahead and add some metal beads in between. So I've got these silver um, four millimeter rounds and I put them between each bead on the top and then I put five and then a bead and then five crystals and a bead and then five crystals and a bead a couple of times then ten crystals and a bead and ten crystals and a bead and then um, a bead at the end here and I am going to um, do a crimp end so that I can attach this to my um, jump ring in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a crimp bead. I'm going to bring it down to my work like this. And then I'm going to go back through the crimp bead and back through the crystal on the, um, or not the crystal, but the four millimeter round. I'm going to go through the crimp bead, <laughs> maybe, and the four millimeter round right underneath it. Now you don't want to pull it 
incredibly tight. You want to leave a tiny bit of slack in here. When I very first started, I thought that when you strung, there should be no um, wire showing at all next to your crimps. On this end, I don't really have a lot. However, I have learned since that if there isn't a tiny bit of slack in the wire for some movement between the beads, then uh, it'll break. So leave a tiny bit and then let's crimp this bead. So I have brought it through. I brought it through the crimp bead. I brought it through this bead. There's a tiny bit of movement here. Not a lot, but a tiny bit. And then I am going to crimp by squeezing the back end here and then turning it sideways and squeezing the front little um, section in the crimp bead pliers here. And that closes it. I'm going to look and make sure I have a nice closing. And then I'm going to give it just one more little squeeze in the very tip here to make sure it's tight. And then I am going to cut off this excess stuff. Now I'm going through this very quickly. I believe that most of the people that watch my channel should know how to string, so I'm not getting too detailed, but this is one side of my necklace. Now, I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to make the other side. I will start the same way, but I'll put my other end of my toggle on. I will count how many beads I have uh, in each section, make it exactly the same, and then I will be back. I will crimp the end just like this, and I'll be right back. So I discovered off this. camera that my um, end of my clasp didn't want to lay right. So I'm just going to make a loop, and I had to add a jump ring. So I had to redo this so that I could add a jump ring. So what I'm going to do on this one is I am going to just make a loop. I'm going. I put my um, little jump ring on my soft flex and I'm going to bend it around just like I did earlier go through but I'm not going to have the clasp on it I'm just going to make a loop in my wire to make an end stop basically and something also that I can put my jump ring on so I'm just going to run that through pull it down to the size that I think it should be if I can grab that other little end. So I want to look at this end and see basically what size it is. It's pretty small, so I'm going to pull this really pretty small, about like this. And then I'm just going to crimp this like this, and then I can start stringing. So I'm going to take this and crimp it like so. And then I will start stringing and make it exactly like this Okay, side. so I have made both it. sides of my necklace now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little pendant combination I made here. This little guy here. And I'm going to open the very last jump ring on this little combination I made. And I'm going to slide one end on on one side of the pendant and then slide the other end on to the jump ring like so and then I am going to close this jump ring. Now you could use a closed jump ring here it would be safer if you had one that was closed and then just um, a, attach jump rings on either side of your little um, strands that we've made for the necklace and um, then attach them to the closed jump ring. It would be a little bit more secure because jump rings are pretty much the weakest link quite literally. And so what I have now is this is the bottom of my necklace. Let me arrange it so you can see what it looks like. If I can zoom out. You know, I don't want you to see all my messes here. I've got messes everywhere. Usually I keep it nice and neat when I'm recording, but right now I'm playing more than I'm doing a tutorial for you guys. And I just thought that we should all play together. So anyway, that's what the necklace looks like. I think it's really kind of pretty. I mean, it turned out pretty. And then here are 
the earrings here. Very simple, very fast. You could have a couple things done with these little wire wrapped crystals very quickly. And like I said, they would be a very elegant quality gift and it doesn't take 20 years to make it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If not, I'm sorry. Bye-bye.